Good evening, uh, Governor Manny Mamba, uh, Governor of uh, Tugigara, uh, Governor of Cagayan Province. Magandang magandang gabi po sa inyo, sir. Governor? Well, I'm Governor Padilla. Oh, Governor Padilla. Good evening. Sorry po. Um, so, sorry po, sorry po, uh, Governor. Uh, this is Jen Galvez po. Good evening and welcome po sa ating program Basta Batas. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, on the line is the Governor of Nueva Vizcaya, si Governor uh, Carlos Padilla. Dati rin po siyang uh, congressman. Uh, siya po ay masipag na lawmaker at veterano po ito. And I'm sure sanay na sanay po kayo, sir, sa uh, crisis management. Um, ngayon po, unprecedented po itong uh, hinaharap po natin sa COVID-19. Uh, Governor, ano po ang latest sa Nueva Vizcaya? Well, um, siguro yung magandang balita as of yesterday, uh, out of the 14 uh, persons under investigation or mga may suspected na kaso ng coronavirus, uh, out of the 14, labing isa ang dumabas na yung kanilang uh, lab test results at uh, puro negative. So, Tatlo na lang ang naiiwan out of the original 14 dito sa Nueva Vizcaya. Okay, so ulitin ko lang po, Governor. Pero kaninang umaga, mm -hmm. na-report yung chairman ng uh, provincial task force natin on coronavirus mm -hmm. na mayroong tatlong nadagdag na persons under investigation. So oh. anyway, under okay. investigation. At uh, sa dalawang ito ay galing abroad. At yung isa naman ay local galing nga sa Metro Manila. Mm, okay. Pero at least masasabi natin na sa ngayon, officially, wala pang kaso dito sa Nueva Vizcaya na apektado ng coronavirus. So, oh. yan more or less ang brief description ngayon dito sa probinsya ng Nueva That's a breath of fresh air, Governor. Na po. So, ulitin ko lang ho sa ating mga listeners, especially ho sa mga taga Nueva Vizcaya. No? According to Governor uh, Padilla, 14 po ang tinest uh, na, PU, na PUI, no? persons under investigation. Pero negative, nag-turn po ito ng negative. Although tatlo po po doon ay iniintay yung resulta. And then ngayon po, as of today po ba, may, na, may nadagdag po na tatlo ulit na, na, pers, na PUI? Tama po ba yun, Governor? Marina, may nagdating sa akin, kaya pwede pakikuan ulit. Uh, ulitin ko lang po, uh, Governor, for out of the 14... Medyo, pwede malakasan ng konti. Uh, medyo nahihinaan si... Na, hindi ko kasi makuha yung monitor ko rito sa local radio. Sige namin, po, kaya, sige po, Governor. Lalakasan po na, ayusin po, inaayos na po ng technical natin. Uh, ayan, medyo malakas na po ba, Gov? Well, sige, narinig, pero... Sige, okay. Pang, uh, so Gov, it's, so so at least po meron tayong uh, uh, positive news no sa mga taga Nueva Vizcaya. Pero Governor, <clears throat> um kamusta naman po? Wala pa ho bang uh, kamusta naman po yung uh, yung yung checkpoint, yung security? Kamusta po diyan sa Nueva sa Nueva Vizcaya? Wala pa ho bang wala ho bang uh, wala ho bang pasaway na mga na mga uh, tao diyan sa pagka-quarantine well, po natin? Why? By and large, maganda naman ang implementasyon ng uh, checkpoint natin. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, may mga isolated cases, pero yun naman eh, nabibigyan natin ng uh, uh, attention kung may mga kaso na dapat mabigyan kaagad na attention. At na ito po'y nailalapit sa amin. Uh, kami naman eh, uh, immediately nagre-respond. Para sa ganun ay maging smooth yung ating palakaran sa mga checkpoint. Of course, hindi natin maiwasan yung mga pasaway. <laughs> Kaya siguro ang isang magandang pangyayari dito sa ating interview ay mabigyan tayo ng pagkakataon na manawagan sa ating probinsya, kababayan dito sa Nueva Vizcaya. Sige po. Kasi alam naman natin na yung... Pinaiiral na checkpoint dahil po sa memorandum circular na galing sa opisina ni Presidente, mm -hmm. eh, ito po ay kailangan natin para sa ganun. Mm -hmm. Mas uh, madalian ang pagsugpo ng uh, kalaban natin. Ngayong mm -hmm. panahong ito, iisa ang kalaban natin sa coronavirus. Kaya mm -hmm. ayan ang unang panawagan natin. Let's uh, support and cooperate 
mm-hmm. doon sa mga checkpoints natin. At kung may mga gray areas naman, eh, anytime nakahanda naman po kami na makipagtulungan para sa ganun. Maayos yung mga concerns na yan. Support and course, cooperate. Ang pangalawang panawagan natin ay magkaroon ng pagkakaisa dito sa probinsya ng Nueva Vizcaya. Mm-hmm. Supportahan natin ang mga national authorities, supportahan mm-hmm. natin ang DOH, mm-hmm. at uh, makipagtulungan tayo. Imbes na tayo ang maging problema, kasama tayo sa pag-solve ng problema. Mm-hmm. Tama. Tama po yun. Uh, Governor, Governor uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong uh, uh, pagpapaunlak sa amin. I know you're very, very, very busy. Mag-ingat din po kayo at huwag niyo pong kalimutan na uh, pinagdadasal po namin din ang inyong kaligtasan, pati po ni Madam Ruth Padilla. Maraming maraming salamat po. At siyempre, yan din ang uh, dapat hingin natin. Lahat po tayo magkaisa, manalangin. Mm-hmm. Uh, humingi po tayo ng basbas at tulong sa buong may kapal. Tapagkat alam natin na anuman yung ating gagawin ay merong uh, limit. Kaya kailangan hindi lang yung sarili natin, kundi ang ating Panginoon, hindi din natin ng uh, kanyang uh, bendisyon at basbas. Sige, maraming salamat. Salamat po, at, Governor. Uh, Thank you very much. Bagay po itong pagkakataon binigyan niyo. Salamat sa po. Uh, Governor okay. Carlos Padilla of uh, Nueva Vizcaya. Susunod po natin. Susunod po natin si sino ang ating uh... Okay. Uh, before we move on to our uh, next uh, phone patch interview, again, papaalala ko lang po sa inyo that uh, this is Jen Galvez. I'm sitting in for Attorney Boom. Uh, this is a special program of uh, Basta Batas for COVID-19. Shout out to June Gallardo. Uh, hello sa'yo. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong pagtutok. Once again, this is Basta Batas. Sitting in for Attorney Boom. Alright, once again, nagbabalik po ang Basta Batas special programming for COVID-19. And on the line is our dear Mayor ng Kawayan City, Isabela, Mayor Bernard D. Mayor Bernard D., good evening. Good evening, good evening po. Hello, good evening, Mayor. Good evening po. Good evening. Mayor, this is Jen Galvez. Magandang magandang gabi po. How are you, Mayor? I'm okay. Hi, Jen. Uh, magandang gabi sa lahat ng listeners po natin. Uh, staying healthy. Hel- I- alam ko naman, Mayor, lagi kang healthy. <laughs> Pero um, we just want to take this opportunity para kamustahin po ang uh, Kawayan City, kamusta ang uh, leadership ng, na ipinapakita ng ating mabuting Mayor sa syudad po ng Kawayan. Kamusta po dyan ang situation, Mayor? Wala ka naman po. As of now, we are still COVID-free. Wala pa nang uh, hmm. may talang positive case uh, and we've implemented uh, uh, the enhanced community quality. In fact, the day before, the President has uh, announced We've already implemented, so we are mm-hmm. strictly following it. Uh, we've uh, suspended uh, all uh, public transportation. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've also imposed a liquor ban, um, and basically we have coordinated um, uh, with our supermarkets, uh, such as uh, Save More, Pure Gold, uh, local supermarkets, to do roving, uh, roving groceries. Para roving grocery, ah? Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Mayor, uh, abot ba yun ang Manila? <laughs> okay. So um pero yung yung curfew I believe uh in place din yun, 'di ba? Nationwide naman yun, uh, mayor, yes, 'di ba? Yes, 8 to 5 uh, PM curfew. Oh. 8 to 5 AM curfew. Mm-hmm. Uh, just a question, mayor. Kung sakaling meron because you said congratulations, no? Th- sana sana magpatuloy ito. You're COVID free. So ladies and gentlemen, yeah. uh, you're be mayor, you're being heard not just in Kawayan. Uh, this is we're streaming live uh, also on Facebook and on YouTube and also so um, you're, we're being carried by uh, other stations of Vanguard Radio Network. Um, ang tanong ko po is, kung COVID-free ang, ang kawayan, uh, just in case, wag naman po sana, pa- anong gagawin ng, kung may ma-infect, uh, kung sakaling pumasok yung, yung virus sa iyong siyudad, anong kailangan gawin ng publiko? Saan sila tatawag? Is there a hotline? Is there a, a, you know, a number that they can call? 
Yeah, so in fact, we have a COVID task force, we have a hotline, mm. we have a... Um, this task actually, force is a, local, no, Mayor? UI, yeah, local COVID-19 uh, task mm -hmm, force. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we also have the BHERT, the Health Emergency uh, Teams in, in, in place. However, we have uh, five guys um, up to this day. We're mm -hmm. just waiting for the naging exodus ng Manila nung uh, nag-lockdown. Yes. Talagang lahat sa uh, isa mga um, central in in the region, kahit hindi taga-kawayan, dumaan malamang sa kawayan yung mga uh, biyahista dahil meron kami uh, terminal. Mm -hmm. So this is very important uh, to note that uh, we really have to do tracing and uh, go back. In fact, meron nag-test ng positive sa uh, Cagayan, sa bayan ng Cagayan, and we're trying to trace now yung sa stopover niya sa Kawayan, kung sino yung mga nakahulubili niya. Ah, okay. So, so Mayor... So, very crucial for us. Okay. So, Mayor, uh, i-confirm ko lang, no? Meron pong nag-test ng positive sa Kagayan, pero dumaan yes. yun sa Kawayan, sa Isabela, kasi dadaanan yes. yan talaga, eh. Papunta Correct. sa... Ang Isabela, dinadaanan talaga yan papuntang Tugigaraw, eh. Correct. Pa papuntang Kagayan, di ba? And pa talaga sa Kawayan. Mm -hmm. Ah, I see. So, nagko-contact nagko -contact tracing naman kayo. Yes po, apo. Ah, okay, Mayor, that's good. So, but so far, ang Kawayan City po ay negative, no? It's it's uh, COVID-free, alright? Yeah, yeah, we're actually um, uh, fighting or, or going up against uh, not just COVID-19, pero yung ASF din, ah, uh, and also yung bird flu. So, we're, we're really apo. fighting against three viruses not to go inside Kawayan. Okay, so Mayor, kailangan natin ng matinding dasalan to, no? But any, any message for uh, your constituents, Mayor Bernard? Well, siguro panawagan na lang po, uh, hindi lamang sa uh, mga taga-kawayan, kundi sa lahat ng listeners ninyo, uh, na ito pong uh, uh, hinaharap natin na gera against uh, COVID-19. It's already a war at wala pong mm -hmm. blueprint, walang uh, tamang paraan kung paano iharapin o paano dapat gawin doon. Uh, we, as in Kawayan, meron kami mm -hmm. daily updates sa uh, parang trial and error na nangyayari. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, want to, as much as possible, give the best uh, public service uh, na hindi inconvenient sa ating taong mm -hmm. So, balit following the rules of uh, social distancing and, mm -hmm. and all the guidelines that was set forth by the government. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why daily we're trying to adjust. And ang aming hinihiling na lamang po, siguro hindi lamang uh, taga sa Kawayan, kundi sa lahat ng mga tao sa gobyerno, Hinihingi na namin ang pasensya ng taong bayan po uh, sa mga ganitong mm -hmm. panahon. Marami pong pagkukulang ang, uh, ang, ang mga leaders or ang mga guidelines natin. I'm sure uh, marami frustrations. Mm -hmm. Pero po ang isipin na lang po natin ito po ay para sa kabubuti ng uh, mas nakakami at ng Pilipino. Mayor, you have our prayers. Uh, but congratulations for uh, so far no, sa inyong uh, crisis leadership. Maraming maraming salamat po for your time. And regards to Madam Cecil D. Thank you very much, Jen. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Nagbabalik po ulit ang uh, nagbabalik po ulit ang Basta Batas special programming on COVID-19. Nakastandby po kami sa ating uh, Mayor ng Baguio City, Mayor Benjamin Magalong for our situation update sa Baguio City. Ready na ba si Mayor? Good evening, Mayor uh, Benjamin Magalong. Magandang magandang gabi po. This is Jen Galvez for Vanguard Video Network. Kayo po ay live na napakikinggan sa buong himpilan po ng uh, Vanguard Radio Network and of course sa local station po sa Big Sound FM 95.9. Sir, good evening po. Good evening, Pen. Good evening po sa ating mga tagapakinig. Sir, gusto ko lang pong uh, kamustahin kung ano po ang situation natin sa Baguio. Uh, sa ngayon, yun nga, pinapatupad namin yung aming 24-hour na curfew. Unti-unti uh, naman na naayos na namin yung mga sistema namin dito. Mm -hmm. uh, nagkakaroon lang kami ng problema sa ibang mga barangay dahil kumisan, eh, alam mo naman, marami may mga pasaway. Correct. Pero unti-unti rin, uh, nadidisiplina natin sila at uh, majority naman ng tao dito sa Baguio ay eh, talagang sumusunod. Oh, I see. Um, Mayor, wala pa po tayong uh, confirmed case dyan sa Baguio ano po, ng COVID-19. To be honest with you, uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not optimistic about it. Mm -hmm. alam, alam ko, I feel na meron kami rito. 
Mm-hmm. Hintay ko na lang ngayon Department of Health na mag-declare eh, mag, uh, mag-announce eh. So, so you're anticipating it po. Kasi nila mag-announce. Mm-hmm. Eh, ako, uh, the longer that they uh, one that they announce, eh, lalong lalong hindi na nabibigyan ng uh, na, na dit na dit ko natin na uh, Nadideny natin ng uh, tamang impormasyon yung mga tao dito sa siyudad ng Baguio. Mm-hmm. Uh, gusto ko nga maging transparent sa kanila. Ako, I don't hesitate to tell them. Ako, personally, alam ko na meron dito sa Baguio. In fact, meron na nga kami namatay at highly suspicious case yun eh, ng uh, COVID-19. Tapos meron pa kaming mga ibang mga cases pa rito na ako, personally, after talking to these specialists ng infectious diseases, eh, Ako, convinced ako na COVID-19 din yun. Okay. Let, let me so, just get this clear, na, Mayor. Uh, ang sabi yeah. niyo po, you are anticipating na, you know, uh, it, at any given moment, uh, DOH would most likely declare na na meron po sa Baguio because meron, you are ako. highly suspicious na yung pong recent na namatay dyan sa inyong siyudad ay uh, positive po ng COVID-19. In, in yes. your words, Mayor Magalong, tama po ba? Yes, oh, official na lang ng announcement. You're just waiting for an official announcement, of opo. Oh. Uh-huh. I see. Pero, so, Mayor, Mayor, matanong ko lang po, kung ganun po ang situation, what are you uh, doing, what is the uh, the local government uh, unit doing to address this? Kasi alam po natin, it's very contagious, it's highly contagious. Ano po ang, um, how, how is your uh, uh, um, um, government responding to this situation, given that na wala pa pong official declaration? Ang ginagawa namin, hindi ko na hinihintay yung Department of Health na mag-declare. Mm-hmm. Once na nakausap ko yung mga doctors at sinabi sa akin na highly suspicious to na case, nire-red flag na namin yan, nire-red flag na namin yan at magkakandap na kagad kami ng mga contact tracing. Mm-hmm. Kasi, uh, ang laki ng implication kung hihintay mo yung magmula nung nag-red flag hanggang dun sa confirmatory test, haabot siya ng mga 8 days, 10 days. Mm-hmm. And by that time, yan. kumalat na po, ano? Oh, every hindi hindi natin sinasabing every day counts dito. Every minute counts. Every minute counts. Okay, that's oh, very kaya dapat uh, ayusin na nila yung kanilang protocol, Marian. You know, these are abnormal times, unusual times. Mm-hmm. And it requires kwandinto innovations, requires, you know, uh, non-traditional approaches, mm-hmm. non-traditional solutions. Kaya dapat doon tayo naging nag-iisip, nag-iisip tayo no? how to address itong mga gaps na to. Kasi ito, gaps ito eh. Mm-hmm. Hindi pwede yung traditional approach mo pa rin na bureaucratic pa rin yung process natin. Hindi pwede yan. Mayor, sa tingin po ba ninyo, eh, mas, uh, kail, uh, uh, kung sana napabilis pa ba ang, uh, ang pag-prepare po natin or kulang pa ba yung ating preparation na, na ginawa or yung paghahanda na ginawa sa pag-address nitong COVID-19. You think, Mayor, um, there, you know, we could have done much better in terms of planning? I know you're yes. from, you're a former uh, PNP officer and you're so used to this. Uh, you think, Mayor, we could have done better? Yes, we should have done better. We should have, uh, you know, we should have uh, identified the gaps. And immediately, we should have been proactive about it. Dapat sana, noon pa lang, naisip na natin. Sana nagkaroon tayo ng mga drills, 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 at mga senaryo para at least eh, na-practice natin yung ating response. Mm-hmm. Uh, alam ko naman na marami rin tayong ginawa, pero ako personally, uh, sabi ko nga, eh, ikaw rin ang nagsabi, we should have done better. Mm-hmm. But, you know, ang maganda naman nito is we're learning from it. Mm-hmm. May mabilis naman ang ating uh, what, pag-adjust sa sistema. Okay. So, yun na, inaayos namin lahat. So, as I've said, I'm not very optimistic. This week, was I mentioned before, itong nakaraang week na to is something crucial dahil dito na malalaman kung ano talaga yung mga resulta. Opo. And looking at the uh, situation of the patients, nakita ko na eh. So next week will again be crucial. Bakit? Dahil doon talaga yung mga confirmatory tests, mm-hmm. lalabas yan. Pal- Palagay ko, Mayor, babalikan ka po namin next week, ano? Tungkol po dyan. Oh, Kasi very, very yes. critical yung sinasabi ninyo eh. Um, yes. uh, gusto ko rin pong malaman, Mayor, kasi Baguio, uh, dyan po din nang gagaling yung uh, in, in, in Benguet, no, sa La Trinidad. Dyan rin po sa area na yan ang gagaling yung karamihan na gulay na sinusupply dito yeah. sa Maynila. Paano yeah. ang, um, given that, you know, naka-quarantine, naka-lockdown, may mga checkpoints, 
At, and now you're highly suspicious ang sinasabi niyo pero wala pa ho tayong official uh, statement from DOH paano ang gagawin namin mga paano ang ginagawa ng inyong uh, lokal na pamahalaan mayor sa situation na to unhampered naman yung passage ng food mm. unhampered naman yung passage ng food dito tuloy-tuloy naman at uh, from the uh, from the farmland from the uh, agricultural sector talaga naman yan pagsakay, dire-diretso na yan papunta sa Manila. Okay. So, wala pong problema yung ating supply naman ng, ng, ng pagkain naman. pala, no? nang gagaling sa Baguio. Pati, at meron ng direktiba ang ating presidente na dapat unhampered yung mga package mm-hmm. ng food supplies at uh, mga basic items. Mm-hmm. Um, Mayor, before I uh, uh, put this uh, to a close, meron pa po ba kayong gustong sabihin uh, like an advice to your constituents saan po sila pwedeng tumawag if they feel uh, that they need the support of the local government? Um, ano po ng inyong uh, leadership, uh, Mayor? Uh, meron pa po ba kayong gustong sabihin at ipayo sa inyong mga uh, constituents dyan sa Baguio City? Okay, thank you, Iha. Thank you, Jen. Unang-una, meron na tayo, nag-publish na kami ng uh, aming uh, mga hotlines. Meron tayong tatlong landline at yung dalawang cellphones. And at the same time, nagdagdag pa po kami ng mga hotlines. Second is, ako yung nananawagan sa ating mga residente at mga mga constituents dito sa Baguio. Please, stay at home. Kung wala rin lang po kayong gagawin sa bahay, mas pa sa ibang lugar. No, sa labas ng inyong mga uh, bahay, Please stay at home. Mm-hmm. Mas mas nakakatulong po kayo sa amin. At the same time, you might be saving a life. I see. Maraming salamat uh, maraming, po. Maraming salamat po, Mayor. I know you're very busy. We'll keep in touch po uh, with this development, no, Mayor. And stay safe. God bless you po always, Mayor Benjamin Magalong ng Baguio City. Maraming maraming, maraming, maraming salamat po for your time. Thank you, Iha. Maraming Thank you, salamat. sir. Ladies and gentlemen... Once again, this is uh, our special coverage for Basta Batas and that was uh, Mayor Benjamin Magalong. Mamaya po, i-recap ko no, yung mga sinabi ng ating uh, local leaders from our governor to mayor uh, sa Nueva Vizcaya, Kawayan, and, and uh, ito nga po recently si sa Baguio, yung tungkol po sa update nila tungkol sa kanila sa situation po nila tungkol sa kanilang uh, tungkol dito sa COVID-19. Uh, on the line ready na po ba ang ating susunod na um, phone patch interview? Okay. All right. Uh, because you know, uh, this is a special programming po hatid sa inyo ng Vanguard Radio Network. Uh, kami po ay talagang uh, tinahak namin, should I say, <laughs> ang peligro na, na nasa labas just so that we can uh, bring this uh, special program for you guys and, and i hope you know i appreciate also bruce uh i appreciate also uh, mr noel galvez our president for doing this uh, i just want to make a shout out also to ruel ragasa from um big sound fm ng kabanatuan hello ruel also kai ator mm, mamaya ka na <laughs> excited <laughs> Uh, I just want to say hi to Ali, Alnina, Ag- Austria Diaz. Darling, uh, si Attorney Boom ay nasa bahay pa. Nag- uh, kasi naka-quarantine kami lahat dito sa Metro Manila. Naka-home quarantine. Alright, ready na ba si Attorney? Ready, ready na bang ating next phone patch? Ready na ang ating phone patch? Okay, alright. Straight from Tagbilaran City, Bohol, our dear Mayor, Mayor John Gisnel Baba Yap. Mayor, good evening. This is Jen Galvez po from uh, Vanguard Region Network and uh, our local uh, radio station there is uh, 88.7 Big Radio sa Tagbilaran. Magandang magandang gabi po, Mayor. Yes, ma'am. Magandang gabi. Magandang gabi sa mga listeners natin sa programa natin. Mayor, kamusta na po ang uh, Tagbilaran? Uh, dito sa Tagbilaran City sa province of Bohol, uh, cooperative naman yung mga tao sa community quarantine natin, especially sa mga implement natin sa curfew, sa pag-implement natin sa closure sa mga business establishments at 8 o'clock, uh, mga internet cafes nakasarado na, mga KTVs nakasarado na, 
So, uh, by Monday, we will also be implementing yung mga tricycles natin na isang passenger lang. One seat apart yung sa mga PUJs natin. So, definitely, talagang uh, stricto na tayo sa, community, sa social distancing natin. Mm-hmm. Mayor, parang I read in the news na ang, uh, ang, ang entire island of Bohol, tama po ba, ay nag-implement uh, yes. na ng quarantine, tama ho ba, o lockdown, tama ho ba yon Mayor? Yes, ma'am. Starting yung sa March 16, si Governor Yap nag-issue ng executive order na uh, mag-community quarantine yung buong probinsya ng Bohol. So, naka-extend na tayo hanggang April 12. So, ganun ang situation natin dito and uh, cooperative naman yung mga tao rin. I see. Pero kung sakasakali ho ba dyan sa Tagbilaran, um, well, be- before that, Mayor, meron na ho ba tayo confirmed yes or no? Wala, ma'am. Wala. Oh, thank goodness. So, yung pong, um, in, the, in the event na, sana naman po, no, iwasan natin, in the event na, na magkaroon po tayo ng positive, Uh, na, na declaration from uh, DOH na patient na um, infected ng virus na ito, ano ho ang, uh, is, is the city prepared, uh, the hospitals, the uh, is the local government, ready na po ba tayo to respond, sir? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we are working hand-in-hand hand with the provincial government of Bohol together with Governor Art Yap na identify na natin yung mga, uh, kung saan natin dalhin yung mga uh, pasyente kung mag-positive man siya. And mm-hmm. alam na natin yung mga ginagawa rin. Meron tayong mga task force na uh, na-create. So ready na tayo, ma'am. In fact, ready na tayo kung mag-over pa yung sa hospital bed natin. Kung sandalhin, ready na rin tayo. Ma'am. So ibig nyo sabihin, Mayor, dyan po sa Tagbilaran, um, nung, ngayong naka-quarantine kayo, sarado rin po ang mga beaches, ng, ng gagandahang beaches ng Bohol. Tama ho ba? Uh, yes, ma'am. Sa Panglao, 80% sa mga oh. business establishments nakasarado. Aray ko. De, umaaray po sila ngayon, sir. Kasi ang tourism Ayos, po, ma'am, major pero industry yan dyan eh. We have to do it eh. of the people. Oh, pati uh, kakabukas pa naman ng uh, airport natin dyan sa Panglao. Ano, ho? Recently lang yun yes, eh. No? Uh, <laughs> well, pero time, para, time para sa ikabubuti yun ng, uh, ng uh, mga kababayan natin. Oh. Pero we are also confident naman na pag matapos to lahat, babangon at babangon rin yung Uh, Bohol, especially sa economy natin. Opo, Mayor, sanay na sanay tayo dyan, di ba? Kasi ang Bohol, uh, hindi naman uh, lingid sa kala- kaalaman ng nakakarami na ang Bohol ay eh, naapektuhan kayo ng lindol noon, no? yung malakas na lindol. Yes, and, ma'am. Sa 2013, and, yung right. 7.2 magnitude earthquake. Correct. Pero and you survived. Pero kataiba talaga ito kasi hindi natin nakikita yung uh, kalaban natin. Hindi natin alam kung kailan ito matapos. Mm-hmm. Sa atin na lang, eh, panalangan, uh, mag-pray na lang tayo sa... Uh, Panginoon. Mm-hmm. Uh, lastly, Mayor, um, ngayon pong sinasabi nyo that uh, thank goodness no, na meron po kayong system in place uh, t- uh, technically. Uh, kung meron pong sakasakali na dumating na nga ho yun, yung, uh, yung kung meron na po kayong nag-positive na mga uh, constituents dyan at dumami, uh, wag naman po sana dumami, pero kung hindi mo maiiwasan, paano sir yung uh, services na kinakailangang i-deliver for patients na mga ka- may kailangan ng chemotherapy session, may dialysis, hindi ho ba yun mapuputol, uh, continuous pa rin ho yun, um, Mayor? Kasi yung in-identify natin yung mga isolated na mga areas na pwede lang. So, hindi kailangan sa mga uh, regular hospital bed natin. Mm. So, patuloy pa rin yung mga uh, mga services na mm-hmm. binibigay ng so, mga hospital. So, hindi mo madidisrupt yun? Yes, patuloy pa rin. At hindi rin ho siya mamimix doon, ano, sir? Definitely. Ano, ano, ma'am? Hindi, hindi ho, there's no way para ho sila eh, magkaroon ng konta kasi ito ho yung pinaka-vulnerable, yes. di ba? Yes, ma'am. I oh. see. Uh, so, may... sa province natin, nag-maintain naman tayo sa social distancing. Alright. Mayor Yap, um, any any last words po? Uh, encouragement sa inyong mga constituents dyan po sa Tagbilaran City? Yes, ma'am. Para sa mga constituents natin sa Tagbilaran City and sa buong Pilipinas, kailangan tayo sumunod sa ating government kasi uh, tayo yung nag-implement na mga rules na binibigay natin sa mga tauhan natin. So, hindi lang tayo magpasaway. Uh, Ang atin lang ay sumunod lang tayo sa batas para para sa atin lahat ito. So, maraming salamat. Sa maraming maraming ma'am. salamat po, Mayor Mayor John G. Snell Baba Yap ng Tagbilaran City. Mayor, God bless you. Mag-ingat po Thank kayo. You, Thank you very Thank much, you. sir. Uh, yan po si Mayor Yap ng Tagbilaran City, Bohol. Hati din po yan sa inyo ng 88.7 Big Radio, Tagbilaran City, ang local station po dyan ng Vanguard Radio Network. 
Again, this is Jen Galvez sitting in for Attorney Boom. Pasok na natin si Attorney Rockstar. Nasa na ba si Attorney Rockstar natin? Ready na ba si Attorney Rockstar? Pero bago po yan, ladies and gentlemen, you know, I wanna remind you, everybody please, marami pong gumagaling sa COVID-19. Marami hong gumagaling. Nung ako ho, uh, nung ito po ay nabalitaan ko sa aking uh, brother-in-law who is a doctor, and my sister-in-law is also a doctor, uh, I was surprised to find out na ang dami hong gumagaling. I guess, you know, our responsibility as media practitioner um, and my colleagues in the industry, kailangan pang i-hype up yung ano, yung, um, yung uh, equally important yung gumagaling para na nababalance yung yung pagbabalita uh, kasi ang nagsistick lang sa sa tao is uh, <laughs> daming namamatay pero actually po marami yung gumagaling i believe ang sinabi ni Dr. Galvez Dr. Marvin Galvez is actually mas marami yung gumagaling kesa sa marami yung namamatay tama ba all right okay Uh, before I proceed, I want to greet some friends on Facebook. Uh, Pastor Neil Germo, Hermo, uh, siya po ay single and available. Also, Mariam Gonzalez, hello, hello. Uh, hello po kay Miles um, Almoite, uh, watching from Tugegarao City. Madam, mag-ingat po kayo dyan sa Tugegarao. That's how, actually how you pronounce it, Tugegarao. Also, Um, hello, Madam Elni Matias from uh, Big San Kawayan. Hindi mo narinag ang iyong mayor. Oh, fit na fit ang iyong mayor. Ate Sonny, Madam Sonny Kunanan, hello. Uh, and then also, our daughter, <laughs> KitKat Galvez. Uh, anak, please don't forget to take a shower before you go to bed. Um, gusto ko rin batiin si Attorney Navarro, Attorney Mags de los Santos, sorry. Attorney Max de los Santos, uh, who is in Teresa Rizal, watching daw siya ngayon. Magandang magandang gabi po. Kapatid yan ni Madam Melly of uh, uh, Big Sound Solano. Alright, are we ready? Asa na si Attorney? Attorney Rockstar. <laughs> ready. Hello. Attorney, asan ka na? Nandito ako, nandito ako. <laughs> Hello, good evening, Attorney. Ang suki ng Big Hello. Sound. Big Sound. Ang so ang suki ng uh, Basta Batas is none other than the rockstar lawyer si Attorney Carlo Ibanez. Hello Kator Attorney. Kamusta ka na? Hello, good evening Jen at good evening sa lahat ng mga nakikinig sa atin ngayon. Attorney, wala kang COVID ah? Wala, wala, wala. Ano tayo? Naka-quarantine tayo for ilang days na. Mabuti naman, napirma ka sa bahay mo. <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, attorney, mm. kanina nagbibigay kami ng um, uh, update from uh, update, sorry, sa from um, from uh, to, from each province na each provinces ng um, ng what's this ng Vanguard ng Vanguard Radio Network. Uh, uh-huh. Medyo may good, may bad. Uh, more on the situation yon sa local government, no? May meron okay. lang akong isang gusto meron lang akong gustong mga i-bring up itanong sa rather i-clarify kasi sure, sure. part of the 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 instruction or the guidelines na inimplement ng ating pangulo is that yung kasama doon yung sa maaapektuhan yung ating mga workers no yung yes, meron so, tayong batas na definitely maaapektuhan sa pag-implement nitong measures itong Um, measures na ginagawa for COVID-19. Mm-hmm. Halimbawa, uh-huh. yung uh, in-instruct na yung uh, Department of Labor and Employment, no, Dole, recently lang, I think, if not yesterday, today, uh, ang, ang sabi is that they will release uh, 5,000 pesos sa mga, yes. nasa na ba yun? Sa mga... Mga displaced na, na mga ano, uh-oh. mga displaced na workers. So, oh. Correct. Yon kaso, kahap, yan yung kahapon na in-implement. Kaso, uh, attorney, na, one time lang to na. eh. Paano yon kung halimbawa, mag, uh, sabi ni Presidente, um, dun sa press con niya last time, baka umabot siya ng ano, baka umabot siya ng six months. Paano yon Anong... Sana, well, una-una, sana hindi naman umabot ng ganong kataga, no? Dahil ang hirap talaga ng ano, ng situation natin, no? Mm-hmm. Uh, pero, ang ano, ang sitwasyon ngayon, as of now kasi, 
ganyan talaga wala naman kasi this is a very ano eh this is very uh, kumbaga everyone was taken by surprise dito sa situation na to eh, hindi inaano yan hindi na foreseen ng batas natin yung natong situation na ulitin ko lang ulit ha so as of Ang, now uh, attorney yes. sorry ulitin ko i-emphasize i-emphasize lang natin yun hindi na foreseen ng batas na ito Ang yes, pangyayari oh, kasi oh, oh. Uh, emergency ito eh, di ba? Yes, that's mm-hmm. right. So, as of now, uh, kumbaga yung ano natin, yung mga regular labor laws natin is still in place. Mm-hmm. Unless merong ano, unless merong special law, katulad nga nung inisyo kahapon, na mga ganyang tulong, walang ano, walang mga special laws in place ngayon. Katulad yung health na sinasabi mo na 5,000, ano yan, very helpful yan, no? But it's out of the... Kumbaga, it's out of the goodwill of the government. Wala tayong, wala silang batas na sinunod niyan. At kung hindi sila magbigay ng further help, wala rin sa batas yan. No? Ibig sabihin, hindi sila mandated. At ang mga, ano, at ang mga companies natin, hindi sila rin mandated as of now. Unless nga, mag-issue ng special law for this, ano, this kind of crisis. Mm-hmm. Uh, ang general rule, as a general rule, ang in place ngayon, is talagang no work, no pay. Ganyan yan. No work, Pero, no pay. Oo, pero uh, yun nga, ang marami namang maganda sa private sectors natin ngayon, nakita nila yung ano yung uh, emergency ngayon, saka yung crisis, ka- nagpapasweldo naman sila kahit hindi pumapasok yung mga tao. In fact, kami sa law firm namin, nagsara na kami ngayon, pero yung mga tao namin, continuous ang sweldo nila. So it's out of the, ano, depende sa kumpanya yan, kasi wala nga batas ngayon na nag ano niya, nag encompass ng gantong situation ngayon. Okay, well, jump, uh, connect, uh, in, in conjunction with what you said na wala nga mm-hmm. batas na, wala nga existing na batas tungkol dyan, addressing that, diba? E paano kung halimbawa, employer mm-hmm. ako, and then, uh, na-stretch ko na yung sinasabi na too long dun sa um, uh, employee ko. Eh, kaso, biglang, you know, out of nowhere, biglang dumami ulit yung kaso ng COVID-19. Uh, and mm-hmm. so, uh, in-extend na naman yung quarantine period. Paano yon kung uh, uh, wala na? Kung baka ubus na yung budget ko as an employer, pa- paano well, yon? Hindi ba ako, pwede ko bang, uh, an- ano, ang, ano ang remedy ng, well, uh, na available sa batas? Both ng employers well, at saka ng employee. Well, ganito kasi, nakakalungkot yung situation na yan. Talaga nakakalungkot yan. At uh, kung ano, hindi nga, hindi imposibleng mangyari yan, no? But uh, as of now, syempre, hindi mo naman mapipilit yung employer na patuloy na swelduhan yung mga laborers nila, lalo na kung wala naman pumapasok na pera sa kanila, no? So, nga so, nga na lang tayo, attorney, nga nga. Ma- ano yan? <laughs> uh, ano sila? Pwede silang mag-close ng business talaga. Ay, And mag-closure ng business... pwede mag-lay off talaga ng mga employees. So, this is the time talaga. And that's allowed na by law, di ba? Yes, that's allowed by law. So, like I'm saying, this is the time na dapat mag-step up talaga ang government natin. Mm-hmm. Saka ang ating mga ano, ating mga mabatas. Yun nga, ano, they're here to address that situation. Hindi pa na-address ng batas yan. Dapat ma-address nila yan very soon. Okay. No? St- maganda nga yung ginagawa nila lately, yung tulad nga sinabi mong financial help, maganda yon. May mga ibang private sectors rin na gumagawa niyan pero it's nga ano it's out of the goodness of their heart mm-hmm. dapat ma-address ng ng ano natin ng government natin yan very soon. So ang sinasabi mo okay. is dapat ma-address yan din ng Congress which means will they create a special law for this one or how do they Well, nasa kanila yan. Nasa, nasa kanila nga yan if they ano if they Kasi will have to ata sila, 'di ba? Oo, oh, oo, oh, oo. Oh, oh. Kaya nga eh. So kailangan so, nila magpatawag ano, ng special natin. session. Well, if, if kailangan, no? If ma-address yan, if kailangan ma-address yan, oh. kailangan talaga. Kasi attorney sa Amerika, like example sa Amerika and other uh, Western countries, no? Nagbibigay ng ng financial support ang government mismo sa mga companies na uh, really asking for help. Uh, kaso, mm-hmm. parang dito sa atin, tayo pa yung hinihingan ng government. Na wala namang problema because really it's the bayanihan spirit and I think this is really the time where we set aside politics, we set aside our differences. Um, it's really, it's really, our call to action really is to help the our kababayans, especially the frontliner yeah. at saka yung response sa government. Pero, there Uh-oh. will come a time yes. na, wow, we will stretch our limits, nga nga kaming lahat. Paano gagawin natin yun? Mm-hmm. At, paano, paano gagawin din, attorney? Do we ask for 
uh, financial aid sa government para hindi hindi tayo makasuhan ng uh, sa labor as an employer hindi rin naman matangga ma- mm. maapektado yung uh, maapektuhan yung mga employees paano yun well as the no as the law stands nga ngayon uh, kung wala na kung wala talagang business walang pumapasok na pera hindi ka naman makasuhan ng ano yan hindi ka naman makasuhan if you lay off your employees kasi nga hindi ka rin naman mapipilit labas ka ng labas kahit gusto mong maglabas wala ka na namang mailalabas dahil walang pumapasok na pera sa iyo eh di ba mm-hmm. so hindi hindi rin it's legal legal na maglay off sila kung wala talagang ano kung closure mm-hmm. of business mm-hmm. oo so yun diyan nga dapat papasok ang ating mga lawmaker especially our department of labor diyan sila papasok ngayon ano yung remedy sila if you ask me ako hindi ko alam it's not kasi nga hindi naman ako lawmaker and I haven't even thought of that matter so nandyan sila niya point sila dyan at binoto natin sila dyan so yan ang trabaho nila dapat i-address nila yung ating situation ngayon sino binoto mo? ha? sino binoto mo? huwag na natin pag-usapan natin <laughs> <laughs> okay one, another question attorney um, ano? another question yes. dun sa mga checkpoint yes. checkpoint syempre uso ngayon yan yes. checkpoint checkpoint Mm-mm. ano yung kailangan nating Um, uh, watch out for uh, kasi yung iba parang medyo napaparanoid na sila ano to abuse martial law ano oh, kailangan namin pwede ba pwede anong remedy natin diyan well, well basta uh, remember sa checkpoint dapat lang talaga walang ano wala excessive force no mm-hmm. kung ano kung kinapkapkapan ka ay mo pakapkap tapos <laughs> gagamitan ka ng violence mali talaga yon no mm-hmm. pero Uh, yung ano yung necessary necessary matters na kailangan nila gawin para ma-implement yan checkpoint meron silang power niya that's what you call police power eh mm-hmm. so kung kailangan nila tignan yung ano mo yung health mo kung may lagnat ka ganyan or even to the point na titignan yung kung ano mo yung mga dala mo diyan pwede nilang gawin yon basta wala lang excessive force i see um I think hindi ka naman kakapkapan din ngayon, 'di ba? Kasi social distancing nga, 'di ba? Ayaw mong ano, ayaw mong ang oh, ayaw mong ang paano eh, pahawak ngayon eh, 'di ba? Oh. So dapat 'yon uh, very clear din, 'di ba? At in case na uh, magkaroon ng abuse o sa tingin natin may abuse, meron naman silang matatakbuhan, 'di ba? Bibigay ko ba number mo? Wag, wag. <laughs> <laughs> Well, ano last... tayo na quarantine na na quarantine tayo ngayon eh hindi tayo mga ano <laughs> well, last question attorney uh, um yes. i think dito sa pagkakataon na to in empower talaga ang ang barangay di ba yes so uh, and uh, and um, our barangay our local government mga barangay is ano ba tawag doon barangay law ba or ano ba tawag doon uh, Well yeah, meron tayong ano, meron tayong barangay ano, barangay laws. Mm-hmm. Tapos meron mga local ordinances sa mga barangay, pwede sila mag-issue ng ordinances. Mm-hmm. Pag may pasaway mm-hmm. na ayos sumunod sa curfew, example, eh, meron bang power ang barangay na bitbitin niyang mga 'yan at dalhin sa presinto? Ano bang procedure? Ano bang dapat Oo, na procedure diyan? Meron ano, meron power ang barangay. In fact, ano, ah uh, In fact, every ordinary citizen mayroong power to implement the laws, no? Mm-hmm. So kung ayan, nasa ano natin 'yan, nasa mandate natin 'yan na may curfew kung ayaw sumunod. Mm-hmm. Ikaw ordinary yung citizen ka. In fact, pwede mo silang ano, permit niya tawag na citizens arrest, mm-hmm. pwede mo silang arrestuhin as a citizen, no? Mm-hmm. Yan din yung power ng mga barangay. Pero siyempre, Ah, uh, siguro kung mag-aaresto ka, siguro doon mo kaya mo, 'di ba? Baka mamaya <laughs> hindi mo naman pala kayang arestuhin 'yon. <laughs> 'Di ba? Ano, comedy oh. ka talaga, pero comic relief uh-huh. ang tawag diyan kasi sa panahon ngayon ng <laughs> mga tao seryoso. Authority. Yes, oo. Okay. Uh, you know, maraming maraming salamat. I know busy ka din kahit na nandiyan ka sa bahay. Ay, mm, always... nagtatrabaho ako dito sa house. Wow, dito on a Saturday night. <laughs> Oh, sarap nga magtrabaho sa house eh. Nakita mo ba ang picture mo na ginagamit namin? Nakapost na Facebook. Ayan do. Oo nga eh. Nakita ko nga eh. Nakita ko ang ganda. Attorney, si Attorney Ibanez po ay merong album. Huwag niyong kalimutan. It's called, ano nga ulit yon? Let's Break This War. Tama ba? Yes, yeah, so thank you sa pagtugtog kanina. Oh, Narinig ko yung, ano, yung song namin. Yee. So, we're, we're Hey Moonshine. Yan yung band ko. Pakisubaybayan lang po. May kanta kami. He will break this war. So kami bago kaming release yung ilang beses Tagalog siya. Talaga so, naman. So, ano siya? Oo. 
Okay. Sa Spotify siya, pakinggan niyo na lang. Sige. Attorney, magkikita mag, uh, naman tayo ulit after nitong quarantine na to, no? So, suki ka naman dito. So, of course. Oo, suki of ka course. naman dito. Maraming maraming salamat, Attorney Carlo Ibanez. Thank you very much Thank for you. your time. God Thank bless. Mag-ingat ka. Don't forget to disinfect, right. okay? Alright. Thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you, Attorney Carlo Ibanez. Alright. Magbabalik po ang Basta Bata Special Programming na go. Huwag po kayo magtaka kasi po talagang naka-stretch naka po ang aming time this evening para lang po to give you an update on uh, our situation sa, sa areas ng um, uh, Luzon and also sa Bohol. Uh, para lang po dito sa ating programang Basta Batas kasama si Attorney Boom. Hello Attorney! Sitting in for you, Jen Galvez. Special program on COVID-19. Hatid sa inyo ng Vanguard Radio Network. All right, and of course, I wanna say hi to my kumare Ched Reyes. Papagandahin ko sa inyong pangalan mo. Jun Galiar, do miss na sabi ka? Parang JCI event ito. Also, hi, Aris Balanay. Hello, question. Paano pag yung barangay ang pasaway? How do we complain then? Abay, ewan ko. <laughs> no, I guess, uh, DILG ang uh, bagsak nito. Um, under po kasi sila ng, ano, under sila Aris ng uh, DILG kay Secretary Anyo. Uh, also, hi to uh, Mr. McNeil Mendoza. Hindi po ako si attorney. Uh, also, hi to Arman De Vera. Arman De Vera. Arman De Vera. Parang, business, parang familiar. Hello, good evening. Hi, Iko. You're watching. Hi, Santi Banyes. Hi, Anne. Kamusta ang panonood mo? Hello, Ver. And kay Charles Marvin Labrador. Kay Pastor Lee J. Teves, hello. Ayan, Iko, tatlong beses. Iko, pa ulit ulit Hello, Oni. Hello. <laughs> Anyways, pinapa, I'm just trying to make the the moment light. Kasi po, seryoso itong usapan na itong coronavirus o uh, officially known as COVID-19. Um, again, ulitin ko, ano, paalala lang. Kaya natin to. Uh, we can we can actually we can actually beat coronavirus or COVID-19. Kung tayo pa isusunod sa uh, utos ng gobyerno, you know, um, sumunod na lang po tayo muna ngayon. Yes, we can criticize later. Of course, we can. This is a democracy. But now is time that we uh, heed the call of the the government and also support magbayanihan po tayo. Last but not the least, we pray. Kasi yun po ang pinaka-importante. Also, paalala lang po na marami pong gumagaling again sa coronavirus sa COVID-19. So, wag po kayong mag-alala. Marami pong gumagaling. Pero, hindi po ibig sabihin nyo at hindi rin yun excuse na tayo ay maging um, irresponsible. So, again, uh, onward sa ating program, ang ating special guest for this evening, Listen, uh, I think guest for this evening, I see I, I, I Pastor talk. Dennis Isleta uh, of, uh, he's a senior pastor of uh, Victory Makati. Uh, onward. Medyo nag-e-echo lang kay, hello, Pastor Dennis? Hello. Pastor hi, Dennis? Hi, Jen. Good evening. Magandang gabi, Jen. Magandang gabi, Pastor Dennis. Uh, thank you At for having us. Magandang gabi sa mga... Uh, good evening din sa mga nakikinig sa iyo dyan ngayon. Yes, you are actually live over at uh, Vanguard Radio Network. Uh, live ka din, Pastor, sa Facebook, sa YouTube. Nar- naririnig ka sa Luzon at saka sa Bohol. Alright. Okay. Good to be aboard. Yes. Um, mga kababayan, si... Uh, Uh, pastor Dennis Isleta po ay uh, senior pastor. Aside from being a, before he became a senior pastor of Victory Makati, siya po ay actually a decorated soldier, an officer uh, ng ating art, ng militar, no? Um, na sanay po siyang, ano, sanay po siyang lumaban sa gera. Siya ay, I think, I believe, nag-retire siya as a lieutenant colonel. Tama ba, uh, pastor? 
Yeah, as a colonel, as a colonel. Colonel, sorry. Um, and you have been exposed in, in you know, stressful situations before as a former military officer. Um, I, I, I'm just wondering, Pastor, kung sa gan- sinabi kasi ni ni Presidente na Duterte na sabi niya na we are actually at war. Uh, pero yung ating kalaban, our enemy, is invisible. So, yung mga... Correct, correct. Oh, yung mga tao ngayon na sinabihan na oh, one month tayong quarantine and parang uh, uh, you know there's a possibility sana hindi na pero there's a possibility na baka mag-extend pa kasi you know case to case basis nga uh, pinag-aaralan ng situation na iyo home quarantine uh, paano yon uh, uh, pastor I just wanna get a piece of your advice paano ba tayo magre-respond sa isang crisis na kagaya nito where our mental state our mental health is affected we cannot really uh, re- we don't as as a as a human being, nasanay tayo maging, mag-move around, parang, <laughs> dyan ka lang. Right. Oh, paano ba? It affects, I know it affects, stress really affects our mental, our, our mental health. Paano ba natin dapat um, kinocope up yan? Alam mo, Jen, uh, ang ganda ng sinabi ni Presidente, no, na this is a war, and I, I think anyone, anyone who heard that agrees na nasa gera tayo. And when I when I heard about it uh, being gera, I know. Uh, hello, Jen. Yes, yes, yes. I'm here. Yeah, nung narinig ko na parang gera siya, na I tried to remember, no, what does it mean for a soldier? Na nasa combat patrol ka, papasot ka ng gera. At alam mo nandiyan ang kalaban. Alam mo, kahit sundalo ka, naarmado ka, kahit paano meron kang kabay. Yung sinasabi mong uh, mental and emotional uh, fear, ano? Mm-hmm. So kahit sinong sundalo may ganun. Pero alam mo, kapag ikaw sundalo ka at lulusog ka sa isang gera, malakas ang loob mo kapag meron kang backup. Malakas ang loob mo kapag meron kang tinatawag na combat support o kaya combat power. Mm-hmm. And this combat power, when you look at the military side of it, ano yan, uh, it, uh, it consists of communication. Ibig sabihin, may contact ka dun sa headquarters mo kung saan pwede kang humingi ng tulong. Meron kang firepower support na meron kang, uh, pwede kang tumawag ng kanyon, pwede kang tumawag ng mm-hmm. helicopter. Pero kang tumawag ng bombardment galing sa Navy. Mm-hmm. Tapos meron kang tinatawag din na force protection. Alam mo na kahit anong mangyari, protektado ka. Mm-hmm. So, makas ang loob mo na lulusob sa gera. Mm-hmm. Ngayon, sabi nga ni Presidente, gera to. And it is a global war. Mm-hmm. Ang maganda nito, isa lang ang kalaban, lahat ng tao sa mundo, maging mayaman, mahirap, dayuhan o Pilipino, maging mataba o kaya matanda, o payat, or whatever, magkakampi tayong lahat. Mm-hmm. Isa lang ang kalaban natin dito, yung virus mismo. Mm-hmm. Kumbaga, we can ally ourselves together. However, iba itong laban na to. When you look at it, oo, lahat tayo magkakampi tayo rito, isa lang kalaban. Pero, sa pagdating sa laban na talaga, we are on our own. We cannot depend on the person next to us to defend us. Mm-hmm. Kasi ang titirahin niya, yung sarili natin, mm-hmm. our own health. And when it comes to that, kaya nga may social distancing eh. Mm-hmm. Kaya nga may quarantine eh. Wala nang ibang pwedeng tumulong kung hindi tayo. Mm-hmm. Kaya ang tanong natin ngayon, habang lumulusog tayo sa gerang ito, sino ang suporta natin? Mm-hmm. Sino ang ating ally kung saan pwede tayong tumawag ng rest back o support. Mm-hmm. When we relate this to the realm of spirituality, dito pumapasok yung ating pananampalataya. Lahat tayo sundalo, ang tanong, bilang sundalo, meron ba tayong pananampalataya? Kay nino tayo nananampalataya? Kapag tayo nanam- nananampalataya sa dakilang Diyos, binibigyan din tayo ng suporta. Pag sinabi natin na communication, binibigyan tayo ng suporta in, in a sense na 
pwede tayong tumawag sa kanya using prayer. Mm-hmm. We have direct contact to headquarters in heaven where we can call him and say, Lord, God, kailangan ko ng tulong. Meron din tayong binibigyan din tayo ng firepower. Binigyan tayo ng banal na espiritu, ang Holy Spirit. Very powerful to give us what we need to fight against fear, to fight against anxiety, and to fight even against our sickness. Mm-hmm. Nandyan ang banal na espiritu. Yan ang firepower natin. At of course, meron tayong tinatawag na force protection. Si God mismo, ang ating Panginoong Diyos, ang nagbibigay sa atin ng protection. Uh, sabi nga ni, ano, no, ni uh, Mayor Magalong, we are living in uncommon times. Mm-hmm. And it, we need uncommon and traditional ways to fight this enemy. Mm-hmm. The best way to fight this enemy is to call on our combat support who is, ag- who is uh, almighty. Kakayanin niya lahat yan. Mm-hmm. In fact, alam mo, maganda yung lahat ng tao ngayong mga araw na to, laging nakikinig sa balita, kumukuha ng mga katotohanan, alam nila kung ano yung mga fake news. It gives us the, it gives us the truth na there is a reality. Yang COVID na yan, totoo yan, meron yan. Pero, pag tumawag tayo sa Diyos, na narangin tayo sa Diyos at binigay niya sa atin yung kanyang suporta, kanyang bendisyon, we can be assured na yung Diyos natin as, ay mas makapangyarihan kaysa sa COVID na yan. At kaya niyang i-control yung COVID na yan during his most uh, appropriate time. So, yun yung nakikita kong relationship. Uh, sabi nga ni Mayor Yap kanina, dapat we should have been more prepared Tama siya, we should have been more prepared. Pero ito ang maganda pagdating kay God. Kung sa nakaraan, hindi tayo prepared, wala tayong panalangin sa Kanya, si God, hinihintay lang niya tayong tumawag sa Kanya ngayon. There is no preparation needed. This very moment when you call upon God, He can give you what you need to survive this battle. Uh, sa, kat- sa totoo lang, uh, mahaba na yung sinabi ko, pero last na to Jen, no? Sa totoo lang, ako, pastor na ako, at night, I, I still wake up in the middle of the night. Nangangamba kung uh, uh, parang um, yata, nahihirapan yata akong huminga. O kaya napapaubo ako, tapos napapatanong ako, yun ba yung ubo ng ano? Ubo COVID. ba ng COVID yun? Oo. <laughs> so pati ako, may pangamba. Pero at that very moment na nangyayari sa akin yun, agad-agad nagdadasal ako. I communicate to God, I ask for the power of the Holy Spirit, and immediately I know I have protection because I know my God is powerful. Mm-hmm. Ang prayer ko sa ating, ano, ang katanungan ko sa ating mga tagapakinig, kay Nino kayo humihingi ng suporta? Sino ang rest back nyo? Kapag ang labanan, ikaw na lang versus COVID, Sino ang tinatakbuhan ninyo? That's ang panalangin point. ko sa lahat sa atin, let us call on our greatest support, no other than Almighty God in heaven. Yun lang po. Yun lang po, Ms. Jen. Uh, I, I think, Pastor Dennis, that's a very, very imp- uh, good point and very important point kasi um, laman ng balita all over the world, not just here in the Philippines, that, you know, um, left and right, ito yung dapat gawin, sanitize, etc., disinfect. Uh, pero, uh, rarely would you find, kaya po, kay, uh, sinaman, minabuti namin isama ito sa programa ngayon, uh, and we saved actually this uh, towards the end, para, not because it's the least, but because it's equally important para maintindihan po ng mga tao na, yes, naintindihan natin ang situation bawat probinsya, bawat lalawigan, pero mm, dapat correct. wag natin kalimutan as if you noticed i started i started with a global perspective um correct correct a, a global perspective and then I, i i moved towards you know i narrowed it down because i want people to understand na hindi lang actually 
uh, ang laban natin ay physical, ang laban din natin ay Correct. spiritual at mental. And that's why it's and it's sometimes it's even more difficult when you're combating uh, that that type of war na sinasabi nga ng presidente and the enemy that is unseen. And ito po uh, yes. kasama din dito yung stress na inaabot natin na kung sa kasaka kung tutuusin naman if you know where to call or who to call al- There is such the, a peace, such peace na na hindi mo ma-explain um, yes. unless alam mo kung saan yun ang gagaling and that can only correct, come from uh, our our heavenly Father. Uh, yes. and, and, and Pastor, Kaya, you know, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah Miss Jen, uh, I just want to make this clear, no? Yung kalaban natin totoo yan. It is a reality. Wag natin mamaliitin yan. Mm-hmm. Pero ang isipin natin mas malaki ang Dios natin. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. Mas maki ang just natin. And if I can just leave a verse yes, uh, or two, Miss Jen, para baka gusto nilang basahin sa Bible, sa Acts, Acts chapter chapter 17, ano? Acts chapter 17, verse 24, nakalagay doon kung sino talaga itong Diyos natin. Ang sabi doon, ang Diyos na gumawa ng sanlibutan at ng lahat ng mga bagay na naririto, ang Panginoon langit at ng lupa, siya'y hindi naninirahan sa mga templong ginawa ng tao. Tapos sa Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 33, Jeremiah 3, verse 33, sabi niya doon, inaanyayahan ni God, ang tao, sabi niya, call to me, and I will answer you, and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. So yung mga hindi natin nakikita, ang sinasabi sa atin ng Diyos, ako ang pinakamakapangyarihan, tawagan niyo ako, kausapin niyo ako, papakita ko sa inyo kung gaano ako kadakila. Yung hindi niyo pa nakikita, papakita ko sa inyo ito. And that is our confidence at yan ang ating pananampalataya. Yun lang, Miss Jen, I hope nakatulong yung konting verses na yun sa ating mga tagapakinig na huwag tayong ano, uh, totoong may virus pero huwag tayong matakot dahil mas dakila ang ating Panginoong Diyos. Okay. And with that, I want to thank you, Pastor Dennis, for your time. Uh, maraming maraming salamat for the encouragement. And I will see you very, very soon after this quarantine period, uh, Pastor. All right, yeah. <laughs> thank you very you much. Back in church. All right, don't God forget to sanitize. You, God bless you, Pastor. <laughs> God All right. bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you, thank you. That has been Pastor Dennis Esleta. Kung alam niyo po ang... Um, ang uh, background ng apelidong Isleta, magugulat po kayo. So, isearch nyo na lang sa internet uh, sino po ang kanyang tatay, ang kanyang kapatid, at sino din siya. Bago po, niya, bago po siya nag-respond sa call ng Panginoon na magsilbe bilang isang pastor sa Victory Christian Makati. Vic- Victory Christian Fellowship in Makati. Oh my gosh! All right. Before I uh, proceed, uh, before I move on to our last phone patch, Uh, for for this evening, I wanna also I wanna greet again our friends, our listeners, sa Facebook si J or is hello J, <laughs> uh, and also I wanna hello kay Pastor King hello. Also I wanna uh, 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 mention again no kanina uh, yung tungkol kay Secretary Duque ng Department of Health. Siya po ay Nasa bahay lang, naka-home quarantine, pero hindi po siya positive. Tinest po siya, pero hindi po siya positive. Uh, and also, waiting ang kanyang result. And then, uh, and also, paalala lang po sa ating mga kababayan, uh, don't forget to please Also, check the news twice a day, at least, at the very least. Makinig po kayo sa lahat ng himpilan ng Vanguard Radio Network, sa Big Sound and Big Radio, sa DZXO, 1180, DZXO AM, 1188, at syempre sa 1395 kHz sa DWMG sa Solano, Nueva Vizcaya. Makinig po kayo para po uh, sa ating uh, balita and update tungkol sa COVID-19. On the line, other line is our... Uh, guest sa ating pong phone patch ang ating beloved Bishop uh, Manny Carlos from Victory he's the chairman of Victory si Bishop Manny Carlos hello sir good evening Bishop 
Hello, Jen. Kumusta ka na? Hi, Bishop Manny. Ito po, Bishop. Nanana ba pa rin? But, uh, <laughs> awan naman ng Diyos. Wala akong COVID. Kaya po kami nandito. Good evening. Thank you for your time. I know you're very busy. Uh, I will make it quick. It's all right. I will make it quick. Sure. Uh, 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 Bishop, you are being he- being heard live uh, all over Vanguard Radio Network um, uh, stations no? from Tugigarao all the way to Bohol. And uh, the reason why we asked for this uh, phone patch interview is because uh, we are aware no, kung ano po yung nangyayari sa buong mundo about this uh, COVID virus. And I remember, I distinctly remember, I never forget what you said before one of your uh, uh, preachings before you said crisis brings clarity and crisis brings opportunity this is a long time ago uh, definitely bishop mani nasa crisis po tayo uh, global crisis uh, sa situation po na ito itong crisis na hinaharap ng bawat pilipino sa tingin niyo po ba nagdulot ba ito ng clarity at ito po bang clarity na ito ay nag-allow sa mga Filipinos na eventually to see an opportunity dun sa, cri- sa crisis na hinaharap na to? Sige, Jen. No? Uh, gusto kong sagutin yung tanong mo. And na- naalala ko nga yung message na yun. Uh, dahil sa isang uh, istorya sa Bible. Ano? So kung mamarapatin mo, ito kwento ko lang. Just to... Mm-hmm just to be able to bring the point back ano uh yung panahon na to it's in the book of second kings chapter 6 and 7 hindi ko na babasahin because mm-hmm. uh, in the interest of time pero ikukuwento ko na lang yung panahon na yon yung samaria which was the northern part of israel kasi nagdivide na yung israel na yon meron silang kalaban uh yung mga arameans pinaligiran na yung siyudad na samaria ngayon, nung panahon na yun, pag pinaligiran mo yung siyudad, it's basically under siege. Ibig sabihin nun, mm-hmm. walang pwedeng labas-pasok. I guess it was a forced lockdown, if mm-hmm. you will, ano? if you Correct. use the current term. Yeah. So, walang makakuha ng pagkain, hindi pwedeng uh, magkaroon ng uh, kalakal. So, over time, if the city is under siege, magugutom yung mga tao, ganun nila pa, ganun nila Uh, sila sa akot yung isang bayan by just simply surrounding it and waiting for it for the food to run out. Ang nangyari nun, sa sama na nung, nung uh, famine, nagkaroon na ng tagutom, eh kinakain na nila yung mga bata, mm-hmm. yung mismo anak ng mga members. So, mm-hmm. ganun kasama na yung uh, ganun na kasama yung sitwasyon. Tapos, uh, merong isang propeta, si Elisha, sabi niya, huwag kayong mabahala sa sa oras ng be, sa, 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 sa isang araw magbabago lahat yan yung akala mong pagkamahal-mahal na bilihin magmumura ulit mm-hmm. and pagkatapos doon uh, meron na ako narinig na music eh parang ano ba siya background sorry ah oh, okay yeah anyway ang ang nangyari maybe I can read this part ano? kasi mm-hmm. ano lang go siya ahead. go ahead Bishop Uh, uh, in 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 3, ito yung sinabi niya. Now there were four men with leprosy at the entrance of the city gate. They said to each other, why stay here until we die? If we say we we'll go into the city, the famine is there and we will die. And if we stay here, we will die. So let's go over to the camp of the Arameans and surrender. If they spare us, we live. If they kill us, then we die. Ngayon, ito yung punto na sinabi mo kanina. Ano yung nangyari? Kasi may ma- merong mga leper na nandun nga sa syudad. Ang mga lepers kasi, ang mga mekenong bawal pumasok sa loob ng syudad kasi kasama sa uh, loss ng Israel yon. So, mm-hmm. siyempre, tagutom din sila. Ang sabi nila, kung dito lang tayo mamirmihan, mamamatay na rin tayo. Kasi nga, tagbutom na. Di ba? Pag pumasok tayo sa syudad, mamamatay din tayo, dalawang pagkain. Eh, ba- mm-hmm. bakit kaya hindi natin subukan? Pumunta doon sa kampo ng kaaway natin. Kasi, kung, papa- kung, mama- kung mamamatay tayo, papatayin, patay naman talaga rin tayo. Pero, hindi mo alam, baka sakaling mag- maawa sa atin, baka pakainin tayo. So, 
yun yung punto ko naging malinaw yung pag-iisip ng mga ke- na may ketong na may ketong na mm. yung yung sitwasyon nila alam nila yung alam nila yung limitasyon alam nila yung yung mga yung problema pero meron silang possibility meron pos- posibilidad na baka meron pang magpakita ng awa sa kanila so naging klaro yung dapat lang gawin yung yung kasi yun yung gusto kong itukoy na that's what happens crisis brings clarity mm-hmm. uh, kung i-apply po natin sa mga pangyayari natin yes maliwanag din po sa ating gobyerno so nakikita naman natin may clarity sila di ba alam natin inu pinanguunahan nila ah, yung importante na itigil yung pag pagkalat nung nung sakit di ba kaya nga mm-hmm. bawal nga yung makihalubilo narinig ko meron siya nagpropose eh, imbis na social distancing dapat physical distancing kasi parang parang contradictory yon eh social implies rela- interaction mm-hmm. distancing implies separation so why not just call it physical distance mm-hmm. rather than social distancing but that's mm-hmm. that's that's an, an aside though the point is yun po yung ginagawa kaya nga hirap na hirap po tayo dahil alam natin uh, alam natin na ma- 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 mabuti yung layunin ng ating pamahalaan kaya lang tayo kasi hindi tayo say na hindi tayo makagalaw so mm-hmm. ang punto ko I think ang gobyerno natin, alam nila, of course, maraming challenges how to implement it. So, ngayon, para sa atin, ano ang ano yung dapat nating maintindihan ng ganito nga yung limitasyon natin? Naniniwala po ko na yung clarity na gusto ibigay sa atin simula sa storya na to ay maintindihan natin ano ba yung mahalaga muna sa ating buhay. Di ba marami na po nagsasabi, yung mga pa- membro ng pamilya na hindi naman magkita-kita sa bawat Uh, sa apang araw-araw ngayon nagkikita-kita sila na. sila na yung nagkikita na oh di ba uh, marami oh, nga, mga no, bishop board, marami mga board games kami dito na na hindi namin nalalaro so gusto namin kumbaga ano kasi ilang linggo pa to di ba at least three more weeks no mm-hmm. sana matapos ka pero marami kami mga board games na gusto namin maglaro that's only mm-hmm. one particular example uh, meron nga pong ano yung yung kausap kong uh, members ng start up in mino monitor daw sa Twitter sa sa US ano. Sabi nung mga ano kasi work from home sila. Ang sabi nung comment ng mga husbands and wives, ba, hindi ko alam na ganito pala yung asawa ko. <laughs> ah, hindi ko alam na ganito yung pala pag nasa opisina sila, napakabait, di ba? Matulong eh pagdating sa bahay <laughs> para kanya-kanya lang. So, mm-hmm. people, there's an opportunity for us to discover and renew our relationships. So, so of that's course, that's on the perspective of Uh, clarity ba or opportunity, uh, Bishop? Where does it fall under? I th- I think it's both. Mm-hmm. Diba? Kasi, um, um, if I understand correctly, uh, hindi ko maalala to eh. I think one of the symbols in the Chinese language for crisis is actually opportunity. I have to ask my Chinese friends kung mm-hmm. totoo nga yun. But that's what I read do sa character nung, nung particular word na crisis. Okay. So, In other words, ang ang mahalaga dito Jen is maintindihan natin merong merong kabutihan sa sa kalagitnaan ng kahirapan at pangamba natin na susuan masamang nangyari. Hindi ko na po kasi alam naman po 'yan eh, di ba? Dabi na nagsasabi, marami malaki man yung survival rate, di ba? Mm-hmm. Sinasabi mo nga, ang ang pinakamahirap kasi dito apart from the health scare is also the economic uh, consequences. Mm-hmm. Di ba nag-shutdown para pinreno mo yung buong ekonomiya ng buong mundo. Mm-hmm. Eh, Siyempre, ano yan eh, parang makina yan, kailangan umandar yan, di ba? So, pag tinigil mo yan, hindi, matag- hindi natin alam kung gano'ng katagal magtatagal yan. So anyway, as I said, uh, these are, uh, rather than, I mean, there are more um, knowledgeable people, economically, politically, mm-hmm. medically, true. who can do that. But, I think what we can help provide for our people is a spiritual perspective. Right. And ang gusto ko nga ipaabot na I, I, I naniniwala ko na isang mabuting pagkakataon na binigay sa atin ng Panginoon is bumalik yung ating uh, uh, relasyon sa bawat isa sa mga pamilya, di ba? Sana uh, na na mahalaga magkumustahan tayo, di ba? Mm-hmm. Uh, ma, ma, di ba habang kumakain tayo ngayon of course mm-hmm. alam natin marami tayong kababayan na hindi naman sila ganun ka ka financially stable syempre nag-aalala yang mga yan na 
di ba, ang kakainin nila. So, naintindihan natin yung Kaya dapat panalangin natin na to, ang ating pamahalaan ay magkaroon ng greater efficiency ba, in the food distribution. Mm-hmm. And just to let you know, Jen, alam mo, ang iglesia, ang simbahan ng Panginoon, has always been ready to help. In fact, yes. I know uh, men, a number of our churches here have already been contacted by their uh, mayors to see what we can do to help. And would you have, would you have Metro- Pastor, would, uh, Bishop, would you have uh, a list right now as far as Vanguard areas are concerned? Meron ba kaming, I know you have um, different uh, churches also in in areas where we operate the station. Uh, alam mo, Jen, ang alam ko lang dito sa Metro Manila and it's still okay. very tentative kasi nga, uh, so ako naman, yung mga city na binanggit mo, I know we do have victory churches right. there. Uh-huh. And historically, our churches have always been uh, willing to serve because gusto natin pakita yung pagbabahal ng Panginoon in a practical way. That's really what the church is. Remember, the church is called the body of Jesus Christ, di ba? Paanong, paanong, remember, ang Panginoong Jesus, nagkatawang tao siya. He became incarnate. Ngayon, since ang Panginoon nasa langit na siya, paanong makikilala ng tao ang ang, ang, ang Panginoon sa pamamagitan ng kanyang iglesia. So, mm-hmm. mahalag po yung, may, um, yung iglesia, gustong tumulong. Of course, the limitation now, which is really the constraint, is the ability to mobilize to the move. people because uh-huh. of the distance thing that takes place. So, uh, yun lang po yung medyo limitation. Although, I think our churches can still somehow give donations and all of that. Pero, yeah, pero, like, bishop, lim- hin- yeah, pero bishop, hindi lang naman doon... Uh, uh, pwedeng makapagsilbi ang simbahan kung hindi, uh, you know, if uh, we can use the technology, uh, med- social media, uh, in fact, yung mga himpilan din ng radio kung may kailangan sila, uh, magagamit din po yan if, you know, they need prayers. I think this is an opportunity kasi nga crisis brings also opportunity na ipakita rin po that, you know, uh, God has a message, I believe, for uh, giving us, for allowing us to go through this kind of situation as a nation. Uh, this is a time for solidarity, if I'm not mistaken, in Liba, uh, Bishop. And we would like to, as a church, as a body of Christ, we would like to take that opportunity na talagang i-embrace yung salita ng Diyos na ang, i- ang i-spread din natin, hin- hin- ang i-spread natin, Bishop, is hindi lang, hindi yung coronavirus, kung hindi yung yung word din ni God, yung hope, because sinasabi nila, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Pero, paano ka nakakasiguro kung hindi mo alam kung saan nanggagaling yung truth na yun? You don't even know if that is the truth, di ba? So, it would be an, also an opportunity perhaps for the church to uh, use this situation na ituro yung direction uh, kung saan nanggagaling yung uh, there's always hope, uh, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. You know, that is so wonderful, uh, Jen. Ano? In fact, now that you mention it, kasi nga, ang, ang familiar ako na context is Metro Manila, although we do have churches nga sa probinsya. And I, I will encourage our pastors, kasi yun namang mga churches namin sa, sa mga probinsya. We have churches there in, in the very cities. No? I don't know if you're in Tugigaraw, Kawaya, yes, alam ko, Beren, oh, oh, eh, uh, mm-hmm. Tagilaran, alam ko, lahat ng mga city na minention mo. Mm-hmm. And of course, I, I, we have been using social media, we have Facebook pages uh, for our churches. Pero ay, ang narinig ko sa sinasabi mo na, and of course, uh, the mainstream media which you uh, are also part of, we can use, we can tap uh, these uh, modes of communication para ipamahadi yung salita. Because I think uh, ito yung siguro lumabas nito sa usapan natin. Number one. The government provides the, the law and order. The mm-hmm. medical profession provides the, the, the health care. Mm-hmm. The, the local governments and the, and the food industry is providing the feeding. So everybody is doing their part. That's how we're Ito going to solve role, this. Yes. Exactly. But the role of the church is to provide spiritual nurturing and faith and comfort. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so, uh, uh, you know, sabi po sa Romans, chapters 10, verse 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. So, mahalaga nga, Jen, na marinig nila yung salita ng Diyos. Kasi ang salita ng Diyos is alive, eh. it's living. Dahil buhay ang salita ng Diyos. Kasi ang Diyos 
ang siyang lubikha ng langit at lupa, ginamit po niya yung pananalita niya. The worlds were created by His Word, and the Word is still what sustains the whole creation. And so, the Bible, which is the Word of God, yun po yung mahalaga na ipangaral at ipamalita at ipamahagi. So, uh, I will actually talk to our our leaders and encourage them. Well, actually, dito sa Metro Manila, we're already doing that. Uh, if you go to our Facebook page, uh, Victory, and then you will see that, uh, of course, on uh, in the website as well, mm-hmm. sasabihin po kung saan yung mga lugar. So, at least, kami po, and I'm sure marami naman pong mga uh, simbahan, hindi lang naman po kami, pero we're doing our part, gaya nga ng sinabi mo, to to preach the good news. And, um, I, I know that part of the challenge is accurate reporting. I know that that's that's, right. uh, that's important for media. Pero the good thing is the gospel or yung magandang balita ng mga, it is good news. And that's what will lift accurate. up the spirits. Um, anyway, I, yun lang, ano, yung going back to that statement, Christ brings clarity. I think the other thing that we're realizing, and, and I know this is not good to, uh, uh, not good, it's, it's good, but it's not something we like to hear and the clarity the clarity is this we are not in control <laughs> in other words mm-hmm. akala natin kaya natin ipalakarin yung buhay natin diba, sa ating kar- sariling kalakasan and that's what happens with even this whole world the world is realizing an invisible sickness can actually paralyze the whole world but the good news with that is sabi ni Paul when we are weak then we are strong in Christ. When we our weakness magnifies the strength of God. So the sooner our people realizes that we need, we cannot take control of our lives, hindi naman ibig sabihin na maging fatalistic na lang tayo, no? na hindi na tayo gagawa. Hindi, ang mahalaga is mana, yung pananapalataya, gaya ng sinabi ni Pastor Dennis kanina, it is our faith in Christ that will release mm-hmm. God to move on our behalf because and God responds to faith eh, and prayers. Diba? When we pray in faith, crying out to God, I believe that's when we will see uh, God intervene. And anyway, kung may, siguro kung, kung mag, matatapos na tayo, meron lang gustong i, ipamahagi na isip ko lang to na relevant ito na papasok po tayo ng Holy Week. And I'll tell you why, no? uh, if, if, unless there's other things you want to say. Uh, go ahead, uh, uh, Bishop. And then I will segue to asking you to end with a, a short prayer for the entire nation, uh, if you don't mind, Bishop. Sure. Naalala nyo yung uh, historia ng Book of Exodus, di ba? Yung mga Israelites, uh, alipin po siya. They were slaves for 400 years under Pharaoh and Egypt, di ba? And, mm-hmm. Uh, but God had made a promise to them that uh, He was going to make them into a great nation. Si David po yung kay Abraham. No? And nung panahon na yun, di ba, naalala niyo si Moses, he was a prince in Egypt, but he had to uh, run away because he had murdered an Egyptian. So for 40 years, nandun siya sa disyerto. And during this time, sa, naalala ko po sa Bible, hindi ko na ma-quote kung saan, yung pong hinaing nung mga Israelita dahil alipin na sila ng apat na raang taon, umabot na sa pandinig ng Panginoon. And so mm-hmm. he said, I'm going to set them free. And he spoke to Moses. Nung una, ayaw pa nga ni Moses, di ba? Kasi siguro naalala niya nung tala niya, kaya niya ng, kaya niyang palayain yung mga kababayan niya, di ba? Mm-hmm. Pero pinabalik siya ng Panginoon after when he obeyed. And then he challenged Pharaoh basically to let his people go. And then, you know, Ayaw ni Pharaoh, pinahirapan niya yung mga, yung mga Israelites. God started sending plagues. And and that's really a, a major question for us because can God do that? Well, God is a, God is a merciful and, and a gracious God. But yet God has is a sovereign God who will deal with people who will resist Him. And so, alam po natin yun, kung babasahin natin yun, isa-isang... Uh, uh, du- duma- you know, dinalawa- dumalaw yung mga salot, di ba? That's what things are apparently. Mm-hmm. Until, di ba? And ayaw pa rin palabas ni, ano, ni, ayaw pa rin palayain ni Pharaoh. Until, sabi ni, Fe, ni, ni Lord K. Moses, itong salot na dadaling ko, palalayain na ni Pharaoh. And 
it was the plague on the firstborn. And he said, I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to kill all the firstborn of Egypt, but I want you to do this. I want you to kill a lamb or, uh, you know, a one-year-old lamb mm -hmm. or a goat, diba? And roast the, uh, you know, roast the meat, you know. Basta nandun naman sa Bible yun. Yes. Get Book of Earth. Exodus, mga kababayan. Yes. O sabi niya, yung dugo na dadali dun sa tupa, ipahig mo dun sa pintuan ng inyong mga bahay. Mm -hmm. At pag nakita ko yun, pag dumaan yung angel of death, mm -hmm. I will pass over you. Mm -hmm. Hindi kayo tatamaan nung salot. Mm -hmm. And we know the story, the Israelites obeyed uh, what the Lord said. And because of that, the Israelites were spared while the Egyptians suffered. Yes. Diba? Walang bahay, walang pati hayop. Bawat yung unang panganak na lalaki may namatay. Hindi nila, ma, hindi nila maano yung hiyawan at iyakan dun sa bawat mm -hmm. bahay. And finally, Pharaoh said, sige na, lumayas, uh, lumayas na kayo. So I guess, uh, ganun katigas po yung puso ni Pharaoh. Kaya, pina, God had to resort to that. God, God will, uh, ano, so ito yung point ko. And the Israelites, from that time on, celebrated year after year after year, mm -hmm. ever throughout its history, the Passover mm -hmm. feast. Ito po yung mahalaga ngayon. Darating po ang banal na ang Holy Week in the next few weeks while we're still on quarantine. And kung titignan niyo po, yung ginawa ni Jesus, alam po natin na aalalahanin natin yung, yung paghihirap niya, pagdurusa niya, at yung kanyang uh, pagkamatay sa krus. Pero nung pong huling gabi na bago siya mamatay sa krus, ano po yung ginawa nila? They celebrated the Passover feast. Ano po yung significance nun? Hindi po coincidence na si Jesus inobserve yung Passover and then yung sumunod na, yung gabi yon at sumunod na araw, mamamatay siya sa krus. Kasi, Kung babasahin po natin yung Bible, makikita po natin Jesus Christ was the Passover sacrifice, not just for mm -hmm. the Israelites, mm -hmm. but for the whole mankind. Okay. It, ito po yung mahalaga mga kababayan. Habang pa, hindi, lang po, hindi natin pwede, hindi natin kailangan intay in Holy Week, but mm -hmm. we need to prepare our hearts that I believe as we approach this and we're still on lockdown, yes. kung nampalataya po tayo sa Panginoon, Ma I believe mararanasan natin ang ang salot na ito. I believe God will miraculously spare. All right. Yung, yung pananampalataya po, hindi po ako hindi po ako nagsasabing sigurado to. Ang, mm -hmm. ang alam ko lang po, ang Dios ay matapat at ang bayan natin ay nananalig sa kanya. So, could it be that maybe as we we remember the Passover, we remember the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ? could we see the miracle of God passing over our nation and sparing mm -hmm. us and delivering us so that by the end of that Holy Week, perhaps maybe we can end this quarantine and we can not just start life all over again, but more than that, we would have met God, the God of the nations, the God mm -hmm. of Israel, who is the God of the Philippines. So yun po yung... Gusto ko ipaabot sa ating mga kababayan. That's a powerful message, uh, Bishop. And, and I hope we can segue that through uh, to a prayer, uh, a brief prayer for the nation. Pastor, uh, Bishop Manny, I'm so used to calling you uh, Pastor Manny. Uh, Bishop ka na nga po pala. I'm so sorry. I don't mean to disrespect. But that was a powerful uh, uh, message. Uh, kagaya ho na sinabi ko kanina sa dami ng napaka na, ng mga negative na balita tungkol sa COVID-19 it, it's very refreshing to hear uh, yung hindi ho ito fake news ito po ay galing mismo sa hinugot mismo sa Biblia so Pastor uh, Bishop Manny ito na naman ako sa Pastor Manny Bishop I hope you don't mind if you um, end us with a uh, brief prayer for the nation Sure, Jen, kahit kuya, okay lang sa akin. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Bishop, please. Magkaibigan naman tayo. <laughs> All right. Panginoon, maraming salamat po. Kayo'y Diyos na maawain at kayo'y Diyos na makapangyatihan. Marami pong salamat. Ang, ang nagtitiwala po kami ay hindi sa 
lang sa salita ng tao, kundi sa, sa, sa inyong salita mismo. And Lord, maliwanag po sa Biblia na kayo po uh, ay siyang nagligtas sa isang bayan ng Israel. Kayo rin po sa, sa mamamagitan ng Panginoong Jesus, sa kanyang pagdurusa at pagkamatay sa krus, siya po ay nagligtas ng sanlibutan. And Lord, we believe, Father, that as we continue to seek you, as we continue to pray and cry out to, to you, Lord, yes, we have Holy Week to look forward to, but we don't really even have to wait for that. But it is, I believe, uh, a moment in our nation's uh, journey that we can all come together in unity and remember your sacrificial death and resurrection. We believe, Jesus, you are the Passover lamb that delivered the nation. And you, I believe, actually declare your name, Jesus, that you will pass over our nation, whatever angel of death has tried to come, and we will see the deliverance of the Philippines, and we will rejoice. Dahil hindi lang kayo namatay, kayo nabuhay pong muli. And Lord, we pray that because of this miracle that you will answer us with, many people will believe in you throughout this nation. Lord, let there be a spiritual awakening that will happen in our life. Let there be genuine repentance that will take place in our nation. Yung pong manumbalik, ang, ang buong bayan po manumbalik sa inyo at magkakaroon po ng pagkakaisa. And we believe, Father, just as Jesus will, was raised from the dead, as we remember, we also will experience resurrection life. Our nation will be renewed. Our nation will be in unity. People will be healed. And we will continue to honor you and serve you as a nation. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. With that, ladies and gentlemen, Bishop Manny Carlos, Chairman of Victory. Uh, Bishop, thank you very much. Uh, you've been an answered prayer. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong uh, message this evening. Mag-ingat po kayo, Bishop. And as I've said, don't forget to sanitize and disinfect. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Bishop. All right, Jen. God bless you. God bless thank you. you for thank you. The opportunity. Of course. Anytime, Bishop. Hope Hope to see you soon. I haven't seen you in years. Yes. <laughs> We're just in Nakati. <laughs> Thank you, Bishop. Right. Bishop. Thank you. Yan po si uh, Bishop Manny Carlos ng uh, uh, Victory. Uh, Victory Christian Fellowship po. Ano? Uh, maraming maraming salamat po ay sa inyong uh, pag uh, pakikinig for this special program ng Basta Batas. Sitting in for Attorney Boom. Attorney Ronald Santiago, this is Jen Galvez. Um, yung pong mga, yung recap po na sinabi kanina ng mga, ng, ni Governor um, Padilla, Carlos Padilla ng Nueva Vizcaya, si Mayor Bernard D. ng Kawayan City, Isabela, si Mayor Benjamin Magalong ng Baguio City, at si Mayor um, Yap, si Mayor Baba Yap ng uh, Tagbilaran Bohol, lahat po yan ay i, um, at least the, the bullet points, the salient points po ng, ng sinabi nila ay uh, isasummarize po namin, i-recap namin sa Facebook page ng Basta Batas. So don't forget to um, check it out and also po sa... Um, Pakinggan din po ninyo ang big sound, lahat po ng himpilan ng Vanguard Radio Network. Huwag niyo pong kalimutan. Uh, maraming salamat din po kay Pastor Dennis Asleta. Yun din po kanyang sinabi tungkol sa uh, verses na kanyang uh, binigay and, and words of encouragement about you know our, our combat support, God being our combat support, and um, of course our Bishop Manny Carlos ng Victory Christian Fellowship, ang kanyang, pong mga, ang kanyang message na shinare. Uh, i-ready ka po namin yung, pina, yung mga salient points doon um, maraming maraming salamat po ulit uh, mga kapatid, mga kaibigan kapamilya do not, do not forget na marami pong gumaling sa ulit-uliting ko ho, marami hong gumaling sa, doc, sa COVID-19 at marami pa pong um, on their way to recovery so uh, instead of feeding ourselves with despair let's feed ourselves uh, with hope And, uh, but of course, let us be wise, let us disinfect, let us practice po social distancing, sabi nga po ng, ng government, sundin po natin, and hopefully, makombat po natin ang COVID-19. Kayang-kaya po natin yan. This has been your guest host this evening, sitting in for Attorney Boom. Maraming salamat kay Attorney Carlo, ang ating suking rockstar lawyer. Uh, thank you very much. 
Bruce, thank you very much. And to my husband, Mr. Noel Galvez, our president and CEO for Vanguard Radio Network, thank you for braving the peligro, the danger outside. Maraming maraming salamat. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Good evening.